What's up guys? Welcome to Cooking and Kicking with Magic Mike. Let's f it up. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cooking and Kicking with Mike. I hope you guys enjoyed my first video. This is number two. Today we are gonna be cooking tri-tip. I love tri-tip. Tri-tip will always be near and dear to my heart. It's what my stepdad always used to make our family when we were kind of eating fancy. All right, so I picked up this tribe tip from our local butcher here in Phoenix, Arizona. It's called Lee Bones Fine Meat. It's an awesome place. I've worked with this guy for years. He actually sponsored me in a couple of my professional fights great family owned business and they've got amazing prime tri-tip beef chicken they've got everything you could possibly need along with their own seasoning so let's look at this oh man just another beautiful just another beautiful cut right here look at all that intermuscular fat that we've got going on this is nice soft fat and it doesn't even, we don't even have any stinking silver skin. We're not gonna do a thing to the top of this. It does have a pretty thick fat cap, as we can tell on the back. That's pretty hard fat. That's not really gonna render out unless we've got a really long cook. And we're not gonna cook this like a brisket. We're gonna take this to about 110, and then we're gonna hit it with a reverse sear. We're gonna get that thing up to around 135. The thinner part will be for the well done people that you shouldn't invite over anyways. Right in the middle is gonna be nice and rare. That's where we're gonna want it. So let's get this sucker trimmed up. I just got a nice boning knife right here, and I'm just gonna start by getting some of this fat cap off. And I can follow this nicely around the shape of the meat already. That normally doesn't happen. But it's like, look at that. Chop that open, that's just pure fat. We don't need that right now. But give this a save because you're gonna wanna use this if you make your own sausage, this is great. Throwing it in, you can render down your own beef tallow with that. That's what I would recommend doing. Get some beef tallow out of this. So we're just gonna trim away. I'm just gonna start by going away from me, switching it around, and I'm gonna have that blade kind of point up because I don't want to take away any of this good valuable meat. I just wanna get the fat and the silver skin out from it. Just got a little bit of this fat left. Nothing too crazy. There we go. Got a little bit over here. This fat on this tri-tip always weirds me out, right on that silver skin. You almost feel like you can just pull it off. It's almost how you know it's not supposed to be on it. <laughs> gonna leave that on on top now what we need to do is I'm just gonna give this thing a salt brine I'm gonna salt brine this thing pretty liberally because I'm gonna end up rinsing it off but I want that salt to really penetrate the meat get a lot of those juices that redness to come out of here okay it's gonna tenderize our meat as well I don't think we're gonna have a problem with this meat being tender though because as you guys saw it's got a ton of intermuscular fat going throughout there while my while my tri-tip is uh, salt brining I actually went ahead and I made my own rub as you can see right there all I did guys is super simple I went one part kosher salt I went two part black pepper the reason I go two part is because I really want to be able to put a lot of rub on this and not have to worry about over salting and then I also went two parts of this Lee Bones original. It's just a nice savory rub. I throw this stuff on everything, my veggies, obviously my meat that I'm doing this for. But this stuff is great. Even throw some melted butter, put it on your popcorn. It'll be awesome. All right guys, so we just got our tri-tip. It had been salt brining in the fridge for about 15 minutes. As you can tell, it's just, it's lightened or it's darkened up in that redness. That redness is really shining through right now. It's looking beautiful. I just rinsed it in water, nothing crazy. I'm just gonna dab it dry. I don't want it to be too crazy dry because I still want something for my rub to stick on. Now we're gonna go fat side down, not like we really have a fat side, we pretty much took everything off anyways. But we're gonna go fat side down for this cook and make sure your shaker is nice and shaken up before you use it because that salt has a tendency to kind of come to the bottom and then we're literally just getting pepper and the Lee Bones seasoning which would be fine on its own but i want a little bit of salt in there okay so be pretty liberal with this let's get this thing everywhere there we go that's a nice heavy rub 
pat that sucker in there. We always pat, we don't rub. When we start rubbing, it gives us a little bit of unevenness and we end up with dry patches. Make sure we're getting those sides. That's a rookie move for getting those. And we're not a rookie over here at Matt Cooking and Kicking with Magic Mike. Black belt status on the grill, baby. All right. So we're just gonna let this thing kind of adhere. We're gonna let that rub stick to the meat. While we're doing that, we'll go ahead and we'll get our grill up to temperature. Today I'm gonna be cooking with lump charcoal and then inside my lump charcoal, I'm gonna throw oak splits in there. And the reason I, I'm cooking with oak today is because I watch a lot of YouTube, just like you guys, and all the good Texas barbecue pits, they cook their red meat with oak, oak so why not? Okay, so I got my chimney in here, it was just warming up. I'm just gonna get this all banked down to the bottom. I got some pretty big pieces in there that I've already started kind of cooking down. I'm gonna take my fire poker in here. I want it nice all over the place. Now I don't have much charcoal in here right now, so I'm gonna add a little bit more, but as that hot air rises, it's gonna cook. So I'm gonna add a little bit more charcoal to this fire and my wood chips. Okay, before I actually add my extra pieces of charcoal, I'm gonna add my wood chunks, because I want these to start igniting and give me good clean smoke before I get that tri-tip on. So I'm just gonna place this pretty evenly around here. And we want combustion, good clean combustion before I throw on my tri-tip. Okay, so got my fire going nice. Everything is nice and combusted from the oak wood that I threw on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna get my slow roller on and we're gonna get this tri-tip going. So I'm gonna get this tri-tip on. Like I said, I'm gonna throw fat side down because of this slow roller deflector plate. I'm just gonna place that right in the center. And I'm gonna leave everything open while this grill's kinda coming up to temp, but I don't have to worry about any dirty smoke right now because of the fact that I waited for my oak to combust before I threw on my flame. So I've got good clean smoke running right now. When this thing gets up around 275, I'm gonna start dampering down the vent and then we'll check on it periodically. I'm gonna end up taking this off at about 110. The reason I'm gonna take it off at 110, not because I like my meat stinking, bleeding and rare and breathing still, but because I'm gonna end up reverse searing this. So I've got my cast iron attachment that I'm gonna do. So what, I'll hap what will happen is I'm gonna take off my tri-tip. I'm gonna take the slow roller plate off. I'm gonna put in my cast iron right around grill level. I'm gonna let that thing get scorching hot around 500 degrees. I'm gonna sear it on both sides wrap it in some beef tallow while it's resting, let some of that fat reabsorb into that nice hot meat, and then we'll be ready to cook and eat. All right guys, so our grill is up to temp. We've got this thing just sitting right around 275. That's gonna be perfect for me. It's gonna render out that intermuscular fat. It's gonna give us enough time to absorb some of that great oak smoke that we threw into our charcoal. And like I said, at the end, we're gonna throw this thing on a cast iron right around grill level. We're gonna get that thing scorching hot. We're gonna sear it for a minute, two minutes on each side till we get that nice black crust. And then we're gonna slice in and enjoy, have ourselves a day. All right, so as you can see, this rub's had plenty of time. See how it almost looks wet? That means it's had plenty of time to adhere to this. We're gonna get this on here, right next to our other beautiful tri-tip, huh? Eating good today. All right guys, I just checked my instant read thermometer. This thing is reading right around 112. I don't only take it off around 110, but you know, life happens, I was doing other things. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this off and I'm gonna let this thing kind of rest in its own temperature right now. And I'm gonna take this slow roller off. When I take this slow roller off, I'm gonna throw on my cast iron and I'm gonna get that thing scorching hot, ready to go. All right guys, got my cast iron plate right here. And I'm just gonna set this right over the charcoals. That thing's gonna get scorching hot and I need to adjust this down and we're gonna be ready to go. Right, guys, so our cast iron is scorching hot in there. So I'm gonna throw some of this Wagyu beef tallow in there. If you don't have this guys, you can get it on Amazon. That's what I did, it just came right to my door. It was super simple. You can render out your own beef fat. Like I could have taken the, all the fat cap and rendered out my own and made this same stuff. It would have turned out great as well. Or just use olive oil, butter. They all work great. Just some sort of a fat to sear that in. So I'm just gonna take a spoon and let's get this sizzle going. Now be generous with, with this. Nobody's on a diet here, okay? I'm not fighting for months. I'm not worried. Oh, there we go. Let's pass this thing around. 
got to make sure that I'm not letting too much of this fat get in my fire. I don't need a big grease buildup. That's going to be good enough. Let's slide that off. Look at that. Use it again. Boom roasted. All right. Look at that. Look at that beautiful red mahogany color that's happened with this tri-tip from absorbing all that good clean smoke. Oh, that's the sizzle we want to hear, guys. That is awesome. We're going to close the lid, let that thing go. Hey guys, so we're going to check out on this tri-tip. What I want to see from it is I want a nice black crust on the bottom. Let's see if we've achieved that. Oh, nice and smoky. Oh, it smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell this. Oh, look at that. Just gorgeous. We can get that back over. Let's press into it a little bit. There we go. Let that go for about two minutes. We're gonna throw it in the tin foil and let it rest. It'll be good to go. Hey, what's up guys? I just took this off from the cast iron. I probed it. I was reading right around 130. We're gonna get a little bit of carryover cook with this though. So that's why I got it in this tin foil. I'm gonna grab some beef tallow. I'm just gonna dab it in there. We're gonna wrap it up. Let that thing sit for 10 minutes. It doesn't need to be a crazy tight wrap. Just enough to kind of get that carryover cook to keep going. And then we're gonna get this thing sliced into. Hey guys, I got this beef tallow here. I'm just gonna scoop this out. And my dumb ass forgot to melt it down. So we're gonna do that old school kind of spread on there. Look at that, that's something new. Bet you guys aren't seeing that from all the other cooks. All right, that's good enough with me. Let's get this sucker wrapped and put it off to the side. We'll enjoy this in a couple minutes. All right guys, the moment we've been waiting for, let's see how we did on this tri-tip. Bust this up out of the tin foil. Now don't throw away these juices guys. These are gonna be good to go right back on top. And man, you can just see that beautiful color that we got going on. Look at that fat just running off of it. This is gonna be a juicy steak, guys. So now the important thing to pay attention to is where my lines run. So about halfway over, they're coming this way, and then it changes direction on me. So I'm gonna cut this thing in half and see how we did. Oh man, look. You just see the juices running out of that. That is beautiful. All right, you just stay right there. How is it? Good? A little more? Oh, okay. All right, I think we did all right, guys. The dog approves. All right, guys. Hey, thanks again for watching me. I really appreciate it. Your support keeps me motivated. If you guys could give me, do me a favor, give me a like, give me a share, give me a subscribe. That helps me out so I'm able to keep producing these videos for you guys. I'm telling you, I killed it on this tri-tip. I can't stop stinking eating it. It is beautiful. Look at that, pull apart tender. All right guys, thanks for coming again.